fresh meat. Before 31. Before the Halloween remake. Even before House of a Thousand Corpses, Rob Zombie almost entered a much different world of film. Wanting to try his hand at vengeance, Zombie wrote the script, The Crow 2037. Join us as we discover what the story would have been and why exactly cameras never got rolling in today's The Horror Movie That Almost Was. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes, something so bad happens that a terrible sadness is carried with it and the soul can't rest. Then sometimes, just sometimes, Rogue could bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. That is the basic premise behind the story of The Crow. Eric Draven and his girlfriend are brutally murdered on Devil's Night, and he's revived one year later by a crow to seek vengeance on those that killed him and his fiance. Any story of revenge is easy to latch onto, but it's the powerful way in which the story unfolds that makes the story work so well. Draven was a unique personality, despite his tortured soul. What started out as a comic book series from James O'Barr became a cult film that lit the world on fire in the 90s. Directed by Alex Proyas, the film made nearly $94 million on an estimated $21 million budget. These were huge returns for the time, but they were never truly able to capitalize on the film's success. The tragic death of its lead actor, Brandon Lee, has given the film a hazy darkness that you can feel in every bit of celluloid. The film was completed by the use of special effects, Lee's stunt double, and some creative lighting. While the tragedy that hung over the film may have also been at least partly some of the reason for its success, the main standout here is Brandon Lee. Lee gives such an incredible performance that it's hard to look away anytime he's on screen. He's enigmatic and you feel his pain. He's the entire anchor of the story, so the fact that any continuation would have to do without him already had its fair share of problems. Their solution was to tell a completely different story of the crow reviving a person by the name of Ash Corvin. Instead of his fiance being murdered, Corvin is out for revenge on the people that killed his son. The movie was widely panned by audience and critics, and it's easy to see why. We're gonna celebrate Christmas a little early this year. So producers had the tough decision to make on what to do next with the series. They still had to contend with Lee's death casting a shadow over the films, so recasting Draven wasn't quite in the cards. Neither was another sequel that just retreaded the same beats of the Eric Draven story. Instead, they wanted to hear from all the fresh faces in Hollywood. While Rob Zombie wasn't a filmmaker quite yet, his love for the genre and horror-themed music videos brought enough interest on him that producers wanted his take on a new Crow film. And boy, did they get one. Coming in at 109 pages, Zombie script had quite the title. The Crow 2037, A New World of Gods and Monsters. If you've seen Bride of Frankenstein, you'll know that this is a line that Dr. Pretorius says while having a drink. To a new world of gods and monsters. This scene actually exists in the script, with the young lead watching this the night that tragedy strikes. When it comes to zombie script, you have to throw out most of the elements you know of The Crow. There's no Eric Draven, there's no Sergeant Elbrecht, there's no Shelley. In fact, it doesn't even seem like we're in the same world. While The Crow featured a more dystopic version of Detroit, this is some Borderlands-style post-apocalyptic world. The lead character even rides around on a horse. Which is... weird. And not having any proper crow makeup for a large portion of the film, it feels like a completely different franchise. Instead of Draven, our lead is young Basil. It's an easy assumption to make that this is named after Basil Rathbone, who famously played Baron von Frankenstein in Son of Frankenstein, especially given the connections to Frankenstein that the script is constantly throwing at the reader. Basil is ridiculously overpowered. There's a scene towards the beginning where he deflects a whole magazine worth of bullets with his sword. Oh yeah, he has a sword. I guess because Top Dollar had one in the original? I don't know. While Eric Draven would have been shot, rehealed, then attacked his assailant, Basil never gets touched. 
He's practically a psychic with his fighting, showing absolutely zero weakness. It's hard to connect with him. The main villain here is Damien, a lunatic who thinks that plunging the world into a hellscape is for the betterment of humanity. It'd be easy to say that his name is a little on the nose, but given the character, it makes sense. Damien has no humanity left in him. He's simply doing anything and everything he can for his own power. And his story, as a whole, is the definition of irony. See, Damien is actually the culprit of his own demise. He targets young Basil because the witches foretell that he is Damien's adversary, and the only one that can ruin his plans. What they didn't tell him is that by targeting him, he actually makes him into the man that can one day defeat him. Through vengeance. It's a nice play on what is usually just a seemingly random occurrence in the Crow world. The rebirth scene is really important for a Crow movie. It really signals that the person is being revived for a higher purpose. So the fact that we don't really get to see Basil's rebirth is a bit odd. It gets even more odd when we find out that Basil is now a bounty hunter in this weird hellscape that the world has become. See, he was reborn one year after his death, as is Crow tradition, but he woke up with memory loss. That means he had no memory of the terrible event that he was revived for, and therefore no vengeance to seek. For 27 years. It's an odd choice. Even odder is that he doesn't remember the events that send him on his path for vengeance until about the halfway mark, when he's swallowed by a monster. That's a lot of time to spend with someone not getting revenge in a story that's supposed to be all about righteous vengeance. Instead, he's just off doing bounty hunter stuff, which, combined with Basil's OP status, makes the proceedings feel like a video game. But odd choices are all this script seems to know. From names like Basil and Fango Dango and Captain Skag, you don't even really need to be told that this came from Rob Zombie to know. That's not to say there weren't strange names in the original like T-Bird, Tintin, and the main villain Top Dollar. But they were gang members. The other people in the world still had normal names like Shelly and Darla. Here everyone has some quirky nickname, making none of them feel unique. While the original Crow had a supernatural element, even having a witch played by Bai Ling that takes people's eyeballs, here Zombie has turned it up to 11. There are full-blown ritualistic sacrifices and visions of demons. Hell, there are ghouls in this. That's right, the world is filled with these strange ghoul creatures. I can't really describe them because the script doesn't really describe them outside of being, well, ghouls. So take that as you will, but they act like zombies, which is ironic. One of the better aspects of the script is the dialogue. While there are more than enough cliche lines, Zombie doesn't tread into the redneck swear bombing that he got a little too comfortable with in all of his scripts since. It's by no means natural dialogue throughout, but it does feel appropriate for the setting. Outside of the script itself, the most information that has come out concerning the project is an interview with producer Jeff Most. It's true, we brought in Rob Zombie. Rob, along with 50-odd other talented writers and directors, met with us regarding proposed stories for a third Crow feature. And this is where it was revealed that Zombie's script was not originally a script for the Crow. It was his own original story, which Zombie decided to add the Crow mythos to. This makes a ton of sense given how little the script actually feels like anything related to the Crow outside of a few moments that now we're obviously done with a rewrite. Not only that, but apparently most and Zombie were even location scouting in the Czech Republic and Slovakia, looking for the perfect post-apocalyptic gothic horror world. But during this process, the producer realized that the script just wasn't what they wanted for a Crow sequel, and Zombie grew tired of the lack of progress. Eventually, producers settled on Chip Johansson's script titled The Crow Salvation. This was far removed from Zombie's script and focused on a man wrongfully accused of his girlfriend's death. Being executed then brought back to, you guessed it, seek vengeance on those that did him wrong. So much for not retreading the original. Unfortunately, as for why it didn't happen in some form or another, Zombie has never explicitly stated. There have been rumors that Zombie rewrote the script again, taking out the crow element and renaming it Black Rider X. 
Zombi has yet to show active interest in redeveloping the film. Currently, he's prepping his dream project, a film adaptation of The Monsters. What the future holds for both Zombie and the Crow franchise is anyone's guess. The property has been in development hell, with different versions starring Jason Momoa, Tom Hiddleston, and Luke Evans as Eric Draven all failing to get in front of cameras. Whether the franchise ever comes back is anyone's guess, but at least we'll always have Brandon Lee's standout performance from the original to look back on. Tell them Eric Draven sends his regards. Are there any unmade horror films that you want us to cover? Name the film below and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Horror Videos channel, tell your friends who like this sort of content, and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company, and we appreciate all of your support.